All right, hello everybody and welcome back to our uh, oxidation reduction unit. Today we're gonna focus on balancing redox reactions, which can be really a lot of fun. Um, balancing redox reactions is not the same as ba balancing a traditional reaction. There's more to it. First off, in order to properly balance a redox reaction, you do have to have your um, reaction written in net ionic form, which is what we talked about in our last set of notes. I will sometimes, just to speed things up, give you the reactants uh, and products in net ionic form already, but just know if they're not already in net ionic form, you're gonna have to go ahead and write them just like we did in our last set of notes. All right, a couple things to consider with redox reactions. A redox reaction is where you get a transfer of electrons. This can occur in an acidic environment or in a basic environment. We are just gonna focus on redox reactions in acidic solutions, all right? Again, if you move on in chem um, later, you will also deal with the basic solutions, which really isn't that much harder, but we're just gonna focus because we're short time on acidic. All right, here we go. A little star by this because this is important. Because these reactions are taking place in solution, we can add water, molecules of water, anytime we want to, all right? Also, because these are occurring in an acidic solution, and remember, acidic means that there's excess hydrogen ions. We can add an H plus anytime we want. There's several steps that are outlined here in your notes on how to balance a redox reaction. I'm gonna let you read these, but I'm gonna go on ahead and do an example to show you what these look like in action. This is called using the half reaction method to balance a redox reaction. So let's go on ahead and move, and I'm gonna try and keep this in camera for you. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do, here is my example, and the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna assign oxidation numbers, just like you guys assigned oxidation numbers in your last practice. All right, so going through here, we know oxygen is negative two. All right, and I'm dealing with the nitrate ion here, so this is an overall negative one charge. So negative two times three is gonna be a negative six. What plus negative six is gonna give you a negative one? It's gonna be a plus five. All right, great, so I'm done with my nitrate. I'm gonna head on over here um, to phosphorus acid, and oxygen is a negative two, we always know that. I'm not gonna give you any weird exceptions with that. Hydrogen is a plus one, all right? So the only one we don't know is phosphorus. So negative two times three is a total of negative six over there, and then I have three hydrogens. So that's plus three, all right? This whole thing has to be a total of zero because this does not have a charge. Just like nitrate had to be a total of negative one, this has to be negative, I'm sorry, this has to be a total, this has to be a total of zero. So I have a total of negative six and I have a total over here of positive three. So that means phosphorus is gonna be positive three because three plus three gives you positive six and negative six gives you zero. All right, great. So moving right along, here we go for my nitrogen monoxide, negative two for oxygen, which means the nitrogen has to be plus two. All right, over here I have um, phosphoric acid, negative two plus one. All right, so in this case, negative two times four is gonna give me negative eight. And then here we go, I have three of those, so positive three, so phosphorus here is a positive five, okay, to give us a neutral molecule, which what that one is. Great, I've assigned my oxidation numbers. I'm now going to use the half reaction method. So what does that mean? All right, I am gonna start with Leo because that's the way my little, um, my little saying goes. So lose electrons, you're oxidized. So who's losing electrons? Well, first off, let's focus on the two elements that are changing their oxidation number. If you don't change your oxidation number, you're not the one I care about. I care about the element that's changing oxidation number. Well, nitrogen's going from plus five to plus two, and phosphorus went from plus three to plus five. So I have to choose between those. Now, I want the one that is losing an electron. All right, if I lose an electron, I actually become more positive. All right, and I know it's a little bit backwards, but remember, electrons are negative. So nitrogen went from plus five to plus two. 
The easiest way I think of thinking of this is think of a number line, all right? So if I'm at plus five on a number line and I move to plus two, I'm actually getting more negative. So nitrogen's not the one I'm gonna choose. I'm gonna go on ahead and choose my phosphorus. Now I have to write everything in that compound. So I'm gonna go H3PO3 and just tell me what that phosphorus turned into. So that's gonna be H3PO4. Great. All right. My first step, if you're looking back at your steps, is to make sure that all elements other than oxygen and hydrogen are balanced. Well, my only element other than oxygen and hydrogen is phosphorus. I have one on the left. I have one on the right. Great. Now it tells you to deal with the electrons. Well, phosphorus went from plus three to plus five. So it lost two electrons, which means it lost. It produced two electrons. So plus two electrons. Okay. All right, great. My next step is I'm going to balance out my oxygens. And I balance oxygens not with using coefficients, but with using waters. So I have three oxygens on the left. I have four on the right. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to actually add a water. All right, great. I can absolutely do that. Sorry, my handwriting doesn't look great there. Here we go. Plus there. So I added a water. Now my oxygens are balanced. Next thing I need to do is add hydrogens, all right, because water had to bring hydrogens along, so now my hydrogens aren't balanced, and so that's going to be two. So I added two here. Remember, this is an acidic solution, so I need two on this side, so plus two H+. Plus. One thing I really, really like about redox reactions is that there's several places for you to check to make sure that you're doing this right, all right, and here is the first place. Once you've gone through all the steps for this half reaction, you should see the total charge on the left should equal the total charge on the right. Well, neither of these compounds have charges, so that's zero. Over here, this is zero. This is negative two, and that's positive two. So that's, um, that is a check. My charges check out. My next half reaction is my GER side my gaining electrons. Well, who gained electrons? Nitrogen did. Nitrogen went from NO3 minus to NO. And remember, it went from plus five to plus two. So I gained three electrons, right? I became, or I ended up getting more, three more electrons in order to change that oxidation number. A plus. Great. Once you've done that, okay, your nitrogens are the same, so you didn't need to worry about that. You're now going to go on ahead and balance out those um, oxygens. So I have three oxygens on the left. I only have one on the right. So I'm going to have to go 2H2O, then my hydrogens, and so I'm going to go plus 4H+. Plus. All right. Great. I'm going to check my charges, see if that works out. I have a negative three from the electrons. I have a negative one from nitrate. That's giving me negative four and positive four. So that's a zero. And then everything there is a zero. All right. Great. I'm going to now take you back to my computer notes. Okay. Just because it's going to be a little bit easier for us to see and talk about. All right. So there we are. We completed the Leo and the Gur for this reaction. All right. Everything looks great. Okay, um, and now we're gonna have to put these together. So if you noticed on our Leo side, we lost two electrons. On our Ger side, we gained three electrons. Well, that can't happen. You can't just say electrons are gonna come out of nowhere. So we have to balance our electrons and we do that by multiplying, all right? Least common multiple of three and two is six. You guys know this. So I'm gonna multiply the top reaction by three, the bottom by two. I then just rewrote this. I know these take up a lot of space. It's just kind of the way that it goes. All right, when you rewrite it, all right, so here are all my reactants rewritten, multiplied out, all my products rewritten, multiplied out, fantastic. All right, when you rewrite that, you're gonna notice you're gonna be able to cancel out some things. The number one most important thing that should cancel out is your number of electrons should cancel out completely. You should never have electrons written in a redox reaction. In this case, my, some of my waters canceled out, my, some of my hydrogens canceled out, and then you were left with your final answer. All right, great. Okay, next up, go on ahead and do the next example. All right, and you can pause the video and give that a try. All right, welcome back. All right, here we go. So let's take a look 
at our next example. The only real difference in this one is you did have to account for the fact you had to balance those chlorines first. Each chlorine went from negative one to zero. There was two chlorines, so that meant you lost two electrons there. All right, that's really the only difference from the one up above. And here we go with your final answer. Okay, last thing we wanna talk about is your assignment for this week, and that is um, going to be your lab. Uh, before the lab, I do recommend you doing the redox practice that we have there. It's good fun, especially as I've said before, for those of you going on to take AP Chemistry next year. It's a good idea to go ahead and do that. All of you need to complete the lab, so let's talk about what's gonna happen with the lab. Here's your first pre-lab question. In this lab, you're gonna be looking at several different reactions of metals and solutions with metal ions. So just like we talked about before, magnesium plus silver nitrate. That is magnesium metal plus silver ion and nitrate ion. So I'm just walking you through, great. Uh, you're asked to write this as a redox reaction in your pre-lab. So that's your traditional reaction. All right, we're moving on down. There's your ionic reaction right? And I've just kind of spelled everything out. Solid metal, this is soluble. Remember, that's why it's written as ions. Now we're going to move on to the redox. So here's my net ionic equation. Now you might again be saying, well, I don't see any real big difference here. Remember, silver ion and silver metal are two totally different things, and it's really important that we distinguish those two. This reaction basically transferred silver from a solution to actual silver metal, okay, that could be used for various purposes. So if I'm writing this as a redox, and why we want you to do this is just to see what's going on with these electrons. Magnesium went from having a zero charge to having a two plus charge. It became more positive, so it lost those two electrons. Each silver went from having a plus one charge to having a zero charge. So that means it gained an electron. There's two silver, so there's two silver, two electrons there. All right, as you go through this, you'll see the electrons will balance out. And then actually your redox reaction is gonna look exactly the same as your net ionic reaction. And that's gonna actually help you a lot as you go through your lab. All right, um, for single replacement reactions, that is the case. There's no hydrogens to deal with and your waters, it's not necessary because oxygens are rarely um, part of single replacements. All right, great. So at this point, you can do your redox practice and you can go on ahead and do your lab. Um, good luck with all of this and please let us know if you have any questions.